Welcome back. It is Monday, July 31st in the MLB. Our three favorite picks are on the way. It's Austin joined by Logan. Let's recap yesterday, a two and two day. It feels like we've been just running on a treadmill the last couple days, Logan. But let's talk about the athletics team total under six and a half. Yeah, that was sweat free. They scored a big zero in Coors Field. The Nerfy, we got to sweat live with you guys. Wave the flags. And our other two picks did not get it done. A two and two day. Like I said, we won one and one, two and two, and three and three the last three days. Let's hope for a big day today. Now, as I talked about, I believe yesterday or two days ago, we are doing a, a baseball world tour, if you will. I'm going to Philadelphia, New York City, and Baltimore this upcoming weekend. I'm going to put all, I tweeted out all the details that call in a shot if you want to go check it out. But I will also put all the details in the pinned comment. So hopefully we get to meet some of you guys. We're going to be doing some pregame meet and greets. We probably will have a postgame meet and greet after the Baltimore Orioles game on Sunday. So hopefully we get to meet some of you guys. We love you guys. You guys support us so much. And even though we've been ice cold, you still are coming out and watching the videos every single day. And we can't thank you guys enough. But Logan, let's dive into our three favorite picks. It's Monday. And I'm just going to leave this thing's off with a team that hurt you good yesterday and i'm going on the angels i'm taking the third team total over three and a half runs which is minus 130 on FanDuel now I would not be surprised if by first pitch this sits at four. I want to have FanDuel likes to put lines, you know, they, they're one of the only books that I see put a line at four where you get the push potential there. Now, first, I would not take the line at four or heck even four and a half, but I think the line should be there personally. And I think you're getting this at three and a half. Sign me up. I think if it were like minus 145, I would peace on it. But minus 130 is decent. If you're on DraftKings, I honestly don't mind a same game parlay as the, te- uh, the Angels team total over three and a half. And then you can parlay that with the uh, Braves team total under. Under 10 and a half. Yeah, I know it's crazy betting uh, under on the Braves, but it's 10 and a half. If they score 11 runs, then yeah, you're probably taking an L either way. But well, if you want to fade the public today and you want to just be a, a menace to society, it would be back in the Angels plus one and a half. And while I wanted to come out here and say that and bet the Angels plus one and a half, where you get 97% of the bets on the Braves. Personally, I just don't think the Angels cover that without at least scoring four runs. So this is a way of fading it, but also I think the Angels have to put up some runs today because we know how talented the Braves have been at home. This is a team that just consistently keeps putting up a ton of runs at home. But I think this Angels team is capable. Now you look at the Angels in their series in Toronto. Yeah, not great. They were under three and a half team total runs in all three games. And in that series, Logan can attest to this, the Angels could not hit with, for a runner in scoring position. In the first game of the series, scored big one run, 0 for 7 runners in scoring position. The next game, one run, 0 for 10. And then yesterday, three runs, one for 11. The only hit was a two-run homer in the in the top of the 10th inning, which ended up being the final runs, the 3-2 final score. Yeah, they combined one for 28 with runners in scoring position. I ask you, can they do any worse today? I really don't think so. This is a team that's been stranding base runners left and right. But eventually, you know, everything's going to come back. There's going to be some positive regression. This is not a team that is one for 28 consistently. They're better than that on the year. And I'm confident they'll be able to get those timely hits today. And hopefully they can. And look, I, I think they'll have their chances today. And all you can argue for is opportunity. Like I said, Logan and I can't swing the bats for them when they get runners in scoring position. But they've had those timely chances. They just have to get those timely hits. And we look what they're going to face. They're going to face Charlie Morton today. Charlie Morton, 3.57 ERA and a 1.42 whip. Morton actually has gave out this team total over in the last two games of his starts. He's given up four and runs and back-to-back starts. And while I don't necessarily know if they get, get that many runs up on Morton, then they can get two or three and then ask for one on the bullpen. And you look at uh, Morton struggling with walks. Last two starts were pretty bad. Give up five walks in his last start. But three-plus walks in six of his last nine starts. Ideal hitting weather condition. You have plus 12% home run in Truist Park. You have plus 11% runs. There's a reason the over-under sits at 10, 10 and a half. So Morton, who's given up free base runners, all it could take is one swing of the bat by a guy like Mike Moustakis or Hunter Renfro, who had a homer yesterday, to really give him a chance here. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see the Braves potentially intentionally walk in uh, Shohei Otani, but still... This guy, Morton, is expected ERA 4.66, much higher than his 3.57. His expected batting average is 256, his highest since 2016. His first year in the league, still, well, not his first year in the league, it was 2015, but highest in 2016. Expected slugging 412, which was the highest he's had since 2015. So at the end of the day, some regression's coming for Charlie, and it's came the last two starts. I think a lot of people will expect that. Oh, we'll probably pitch decently against the Angels team. He'll probably get some strikeouts today, too, but I think, the, I think they'll be able to get to Morton and score some runs against him. Also, the Braves bullpen that did use four of their best bullpen arms yesterday. You had McHugh, Iglesias, Jimenez, and Yates. This is a Braves team that rarely uses their bullpen guys back-to-back days. Obviously, the Braves have bigger aspirations than just winning a random Monday night game against the Angels. I think they're going to come out here. They won't use their top bullpen arms. But I would argue four of those guys are probably in their top five or six. They'll use their other guys, and maybe we can get up on Morton, or maybe we can get some runs on the bullpen. I certainly think either is likely. I'll take the Angels team total over three and a half. Don't normally play minus 130 or more picks, but I like this one. Things got a good shot. Logan, you got a good one going. I'm wearing my jersey for you. Where are you going today? 
Yeah, we're going to the Yankees versus Rays game, and I'm, I love the jersey you're wearing for us. Hopefully, he, he gives us some good vibes. Taking the Yankees on the money line. Plus 112 odds on FanDuel is currently your best value in this one. I'll take a shot at the Yankees today. Uh, no one really wants to back them today. Probably I'll get a lot of love from you guys in the comments on, on this pick, I'm sure. Uh, coming off a of Sunday night baseball whooping, they'll bounce back today or they, you know, it, or they'll die trying because they simply have to. I, I love, you know, backing a team like, with their backs against the wall because they kind of have to. It, it's one of those like do or die now or never kind of things. And I don't mind who the Yankees are putting out today. It's Domingo Herman. 4.77 ERA and a 1.09 whip. Now, normally, you know, some people are going to feel a certain way about Domingo Herman, about backing a guy like that. But he's actually been good versus Tampa. You look at how he's pitched versus Tampa this year, five and two-thirds innings pitch, one earned run, five innings pitch, two earned runs, and those are his last two starts versus the Rays. He's pitched pretty decently. I, I would take a performance like that today because he should be able to keep us in it. Herman doesn't have three consecutive bad starts in his game walk as well. Look at his last two starts. If you're backing him, I'm sorry. He uh, gave up six and five earned runs. Back in June, he gave up seven and eight earned runs and followed it up with a perfect game. In April, it, back in April, he gave up six and four earned runs. That was followed up by eight and one-thirds innings pitched one earned run. So you can really go back and peel, uh, you know, back his, his game on like this. And you can kind of see he just is one of those pitchers that, yes, he has his bad outings. But he rarely ever has three bad outings in a row. And I just don't see that coming today versus the Rays. He'll, he'll hopefully have his command and control, uh, you know, working for him today. And 97 plate appearances versus Herman. Tampa Bay's only, only hitting 236 with an expected average of only 207. So I think he can definitely put up a respectable showing. Tampa Bay's only hitting 230 on the road this month. Can easily overlook what they did in Houston yesterday. Kind of call that a, an anomaly because I just don't think the Rays offense is as good as they once were. I know, you know, call me a hater, call me crazy. I just think Herman will be able to keep them down. And I, I think he'll give us a chance in this one. Now, the question is, can we get some run support for Herman against Tyler Glass now? I hope so. Glass now, 3.36 ERA and a 1.12 whip on the year for Glass now. Great numbers, obviously. I'm not going to come out and say he's a scrub by any stretch, but Judge should be in the lineup today. I'd be surprised if he isn't. And he's a key bat in this Yankees order because even if he isn't hitting home runs, he is still putting you know stress on the, on the opposing pitcher because they're like, what can I throw a guy like Judge? Sometimes you have to be careful and pitch around him. Yankees hitting 245 in their last three games. I mean, that's that's okay. Considering what the, what it's been without Judge, I'll take 245, honestly. That's that's an improvement. And you look at Glass now. He's having a, a 261 batting average on the road compared to a 182 average at home. I would be kind of foolish, in my opinion, to pick a, against the the Rays and Glass now at home. But since they are on the road, I could see, you know, a, a you know, a, a, a spot where he kind of falters, right? You gotta sometimes in baseball be a, a game ahead of the, the bad start. And I, I could see a, an, a shaky start. I'm not gonna call it bad, but a shaky ish start for him because the Yankees could put a few lefties in the lineup to test him today. Bowers and Rizzo are lefties. And I, I have mentioned this before, I'll say it again. Glass now aver- allows a 258 batting average and an 813 OPS compared co- uh, against left handed batters compared to a 159 average and 476 OPS versus righties. So my question is, Rizzo, you, you you didn't wear the golden sombrero last night. You wear the platinum sombrero last night. 0 for 5 with 5 strikeouts. Can you be respectable and at least reach today? Can you get on base? Because if so, you know, with that 813 OPS, that's telling me Glass now sometimes uh, struggles versus lefties and they at least should be able to get on base. The key to this game is if the lefties get on base, can the righties hit them home? The, the guys with huge payrolls like Judge Stan and LeMahieu, can they step up and, and, and get those guys home? I, I definitely think they can. I mean, this is why they pay them the big bucks. I mean, go out and be the professional athlete that you are. And honestly, where I find an advantage in this one, and I think the game should be won or lost, is in the bullpens. Yankees, fifth, fifth in bullpen ERA over the last seven days. The, the Rays, 28th. 8.04 bullpen ERA. I've said this before. I don't like the Rays bullpen at all. I think they've they've sold them way too many games to ever trust them with confidence. So again, I think the Yankees are are the play today. I think they have the bullpen advantage. I think their starting pitching will be decent enough. Can they bring the bats? I mean, honestly, I I think they should be able to today. And everyone and their mother will be on Tyro Bass now's props today. It's just it's it's how it is. I don't mind fading that. I, I just don't mind fading fading that and taking the Yankees on the money line as, as underdogs at that plus value price. I'll go ahead and, and, and take them today. But Austin, what are you going with for your last pick? 
Yeah, I mean, uh, I guess I, for, I don't know if I mentioned at the top of the show, all the details about our meet and greets will be in the pinned comment section down below. And the Yankees are one of the teams we're going to see on Saturday. And this is a big, you know, this series, then when they face the Astros in their next series, a big, big series for this Yankees team, obviously. This kind of makes or breaks their season. Obviously, the deadline, I believe, approaches tomorrow. So this is a big day for the Yankees hitters who could be on the block, whether they show up or not today. So I think they will show up. I really like the Yankees today. I think getting plus 112, I think is pretty good value there. Now, my third and final play of the day is all we're going to do. It's going to be another team total. I feel like that's where I have my best uh, best chances here. And I'm going to the San Diego Padres, taking their team total under six and a half runs, currently plus 100 on FanDuel. Now, I would not be surprised if by first pitch, like I said, for that Angels one, if actually FanDuel moves this up to seven and you can get some push potential there, obviously you can take that if you want to. I'd rather get the plus 100 here because that seven is not going to hit unless they go under this uh, six and a half team total. But we'll see how the line changes. Now, my first line read was actually going to take the, the Rockies plus two and a half, which I still hope they do hit that. But I don't trust the offense. I just tra traded uh, Grichuk and Crone, who Crone hadn't been playing the past couple days due to, I believe, a back injury. But still is the team that I just don't trust a whole lot to score. But I'd rather take this, uh, this one because I think if the Rockies are going to cover that plus two and a half or even plus one and a half, likely going to be a lower scoring game. And yesterday we took an identical under in Coors Field and the Athletics scored a big zero runs. Now, I don't think we get a as sweat free winner as that, but I do think that the Rockies can get it done in a divisional matchup here. A team that's seen these uh, Padres bats before, they'll kind of know their way to pitch to them. Whereas, you know, you never really know what you're doing against the A's. Now, the Padres have won three games in a row. They are one of, I believe, only two teams, I forget the other one, that have not won four games in a row all season long. So if you want to bet trends, you would bet Rockies on the money line, which heck, I hope that hits because that likely means the Padres didn't put up seven runs. But so at the end of the day, I don't trust the Padres. I think people, a lot of people are loading up the Padres money line or Padres minus one and a half and all their parlays. This is a team that you can't trust. They finally looked good in that Texas Rangers series. Can they do it again in an on the road? I don't know. Now let's talk about Austin Gomber, who will get the go for the Rockies. Great first name. Not great numbers, but 5.83 ERA and a 1.44 whip. His last start for San Diego, we cannot afford. Because in course field at San Diego, or well, in course versus San Diego, four and he pitched seven earned runs. Yeah, he didn't even give us a pulse of hitting this bet. But I think he pitches better today. You look at Gomber, who's pitched better over his last couple starts, actually allowed two earned runs or fewer in five of his last six face some decent offenses during that time span and he's been able to get it done now he can obviously with the line at six and a half we can afford him to have not a great start we just can't afford seven or runs which is but you know he has the potential to do but he has been mixing in different pitches and he's looked pretty pretty much better as of late now the Padres you look at their last series and I like to bring this up this is a team unlike the Angels we're actually doing good jobs with runner in scoring position you see they went three for 12 three for 10 four for 16 a 263 batting average with runners in scoring position that might not see, seem too high but when you look at their season an average of 224 which is second last in the mlb actually tied with the a's you'd be like all right well maybe the padres are actually are they getting some uh, positive regression or we will see some negative regression today where they we see them stranded some base runners i mean they are going to be down probably high song kim who's been that lead off for him and absolutely crushing the lead off spot hitting 341 this month he got injured uh, diving into home plate with a shoulder injury had to leave that game i don't anticipate him playing today we also look at yesterday you had the guys the main part of this lineup showed up tatis soto machado bogart even cronenworth the guys that normally bat now that kim's probably out probably bat well, one two three four five those guys went nine for 20 yesterday every one of them except for tatis had two plus hits will they get that consistency again where everyone's on the same page I don't necessarily think so. And if those guys aren't all showing up, or maybe a Bogarts goes 0 for 4, or maybe Machado's just not seeing the ball well, then you're relying on the guys like Grisham, Sanchez, Batten, maybe Carpenter, one of those guys at the bottom of the lineup to be able to produce and get on base for these guys at the top. I don't trust them at all. I know the Rockies pro or the Padres probably hit a home run or two today because that Gomber is a guy that will give up some homers. But at the end of the day, at plus 100 for the Padres to not score seven runs, I'll take my chances here any day of the week. We saw the Rockies bullpen had been good then had some bad games against the A's, but this is still a, a bullpen that has some capable arms. And I just do not trust the Padres to come out here, boat race this Rockies team. Give me the San Diego Padres team total under six and a half at plus 100. I'll take my chances there. Sorry, Padres. You're going to have to, I have to see it to believe it for four straight games. You haven't been able to do it all year long. So I'll fade them happily today. But Logan, I'll let you touch on a couple leans and I'll touch on a nerfy we don't need that. Uh, yeah, I think my my uh, strong pick would be the, the Nationals on the plus one and a half run line against the Brewers today. I just think the Nationals are going to be uh, a thorn in, in the Brewers side. Everyone, everyone, and their mother is just assuming the Brewers roll in this one. Playing a, a, a coming off a really high scoring series versus the Braves, I think this is sort of a letdown spot 
for the Brewers offensively. And and the Nationals are one of those underdogs that we've already taken. You know, I, I cashed on them a couple days ago. I think they, they they just have the hitting to put them in games. So against Corbin Burns, they don't strike out a lot. I think they're they're a really solid look. Yeah, and we looked at them, but you never really know with the Nats. But I don't hate it. I just don't think Brewers are worth worth a minus 200 price. Although Corbin Burns has been really good, so props to him. Now, I know if we considered, and this is why we aren't really doing one this because we don't really like the slate. I mean, it's kind of hard not to run back, you know, a Marlins Nerfie. They've been the best team all year for Nerfies, and you're getting Taiwan Walker and Edward Cabrera. Just not one, you know, we don't want to come on here and give out a, a nerfy we don't believe in. Yesterday, we loved the nerfy. Lazardo Scooble, they easily cashed that. It was, you had one guy get on base due to some fluke stuff, and they easily got the nerfy done, and we cashed with you guys live. But you're not just going to come out here and force a nerfy just to say we have one and fly the flags. Although we do like flying the flags. Don't get it wrong. Don't get it twisted. We love flying them. But either way, we're just going to stick to these three plays, relying on the Padres team total under, the Angels team total over, and of course, we're going to Yankees on the money line. Those are three favorite plays of the day. Hit parlay should return tomorrow, but we do have a hit parlay three three legs on dimers right below my face. If you want to go check it out, maybe we can smack that one. We'll see you guys back again on Tuesday for some Dinger Tuesday plays. It's going to be a great day. All the details for our, uh, you know, our Baltimore, Philly, and New York City trip is all down below in the pinned comment if you want to see exactly where we will be and what times and even our sections of where we will be seating or uh, sitting. Hopefully we can meet some of you guys. We love you. Have a great Monday. We'll see you guys back on Tuesday for some more picks. Peace.